Hey kids, it's summertime! Yay! But you can't sit around and do absolutely nothing. But if you are going to kind of lay around, I think it would be fun to learn how to make a floor pillow. Why not put something together that you can laze around on? You could read, you could lay forward on it, play some board games, you know, use it while you're watching TV. Plus it gives you an opportunity to learn a little bit about sewing. We're going to use the machine in making a floor pillow and we're going to do some hand sewing as well. So pull your mom's sewing machine out. You're going to need a fabric tape measure. Going to need some good scissors, of course some pins, the fabric of your choice, and then in the sewing machine I have selected just some neutral thread so that we have something that we can sew that pillow with. And you don't need too much, a little small spool will be fine for what we're doing. I selected a stripe because once we cut this we're going to be able to cut right along one of these colors. So our lines are there already. Plus this is fun, very summery, it's going to be a great project. Now when you're purchasing fabric to do a floor pillow, I'm thinking about 30 inches is going to be a good size. Let's pull that out and see. Oh yeah, baby, we can lay on that, can't we? 30 inches square, that'll be fun. We're going to fill it all up. Hey, I didn't show you the foam, too. Polyfill. You're going to have to get yourself a couple of bags of the polyfill, too. And this is going to be comfy, real nice to lay around on. So a couple bags of that should do it. When you're purchasing your fabric, you're going to probably buy fabrics that are just multi-purpose fabrics. A nice cotton is great. They're usually about 45 inches wide. This one you can see I have folded over here. I'll measure it for you to show you. You know, in usable area, we're probably at about 22 and a half, so that gives us that 45 inches I was talking about, which is going to be plenty for us to make a 30 inch square pillow as far as width goes. Let me show you a little bit here on a notepad how we're going to do this. I always draw my projects first. That's how I know how much material to get. And I keep referring to it as I go through the project to make sure I'm doing things right. Think it out first. So, we'll draw a square. We know we want our 30 inch pillow to be 30 inches. Ha! Huh? And then when you take a pillow like this, of course we want the top to be covered and the bottom to be covered. So we'll be wrapping fabric around so just add your additional 30 inches, 30 inches here, this is 30 inches. Now when you're doing a sewing project and you put two pieces of fabric together, you create a stitch line. And you come in about 5 eighths of an inch so that you have plenty of fabric that, you know, the edges don't start fraying and that type of thing. You come in about 5 eighths of an inch. That's this little piece here then is called a seam allowance. So on our drawing, we'll need seam allowances along the top and bottom. Remember those are 5 eighths and 5 eighths. And then we want to sew our sides together as well. So we're going to need the seam allowance on each side. I know this is a little messy, but you'll get the idea. 5 eighths here, 5 eighths here. So how wide do we want to cut this fabric for a pillow? Well, 30 inches plus 2 seam allowances, 5 eighths plus 5 eighths is 10 eighths or 1 and 1 quarter. You know that from math class, right? So we need it 31 and 1 quarter inches wide. And then for our length, we need 30 and 30, that's 60, plus our 5 eighths and 5 eighths, or inch and a quarter. So we're going to cut the length at 61 and 1 quarter inches long. Basically what we're going to do is we're not putting in a zipper, we're not putting in Velcro, we're just going to create a pillow, stitch it up, and you just have to keep it clean. Think you can do that? I'll bet you can. Let's get this fabric opened up and we'll start measuring and cutting out. You know, I have an additional piece of equipment here that is very helpful in this next step, and it is this pad that I have sitting on my table. It's made by Fiskars, and it's all um, made into a grid by inches. What's wonderful about this is certainly it saves your table that you're working on, plus we want to square off our fabric a little bit. You know, we're making this pillow. We only have 22 inches here, so we need to go around this corner, but I want this edge to be straight. 
So I can take my fold, line it up along any one of the lines here, flatten out my fabric, straighten my fabric out a little bit, and then I am going to cut along the line, make sure I get a nice square edge. It's kind of like the way they do it in the fabric store. Alright, the next thing we need to do is measure the width of our pillow. We're going to measure it this way. I'll lay this down. We'll get out our fabric measuring tape. And remember, what did we have to do? Uh, 31 and 1 quarter inches wide. That should be easy enough. Pull our tape measure over here. And starting at the edge, 31 and 1 quarter inches wide. Now I'm going to make a little blue mark here because it's going to be on our seam allowance, but do you see where 31 and 1 quarter falls? Exactly between the cream and the brown. That's going to make it so easy for us to cut. The next thing I'm going to do is measure our 61 and 1 quarter inches long going this way. Let me get that done and then we'll make some cuts. Right here is my 61 and 1 quarter inch mark for the length. Now take a look at how close it is to the end of the fabric. How much fabric do you think I had to purchase to make this pillow? That's why you do these calculations. Well, do you know that 36 inches equals 1 yard? Well, 36 plus 36 equals 72 inches or 2 yards. Now if this mark of mine is at 61, don't you imagine that this is probably another 11 inches or so? This is going to be 72, so it took 2 yards to create this pillow. Now let's make our cuts. Remember, here is my line measuring the 31 and 1 quarter. Because this is right on a line between these stripes, I only have to make the one measurement and I am going to follow this down on my fabric until I get down near my 61 and a quarter inch mark. Alright, I stopped cutting for one second, but I want you to look down here at the line. I'm getting very close to my end mark here, coming along. Because we don't have a ton of fabric left, I'm going to get this extra fabric out of the way by just simply cutting through to the end. Now sometimes you might cut across to save this piece if you're going to make some, oh I don't know, bias tape or something like that. Now, what I want to do to cut this end is I'm going to fold my fabric in half with my mark on the top. You know what, I think I may fold this end one more time. Mark on the top. I want this to be as flat as possible. You need a nice big working surface, I will say that. Now let's try to square this up a little bit. I'm going to try to kind of line my mark up with one of the lines on my pad here. Take something that everyone has, a nice ruler line up with the lines on the pad and your mark. And I know that a, a Sharpie isn't always a good sewing tool. <laughs> People don't like to see Sharpies used on fabric. However, since you're kids and it's the first time, it doesn't matter. This will be in the um, seam allowance anyway. What we're going to do is cut straight across along this line. You can even cut it off. No one will even know you used a Sharpie. Voila! We have our end line. Alrighty, now can you see here, I have our fabric folded in half. 
with the right side. This is called the right side because it's the colorful side, the printed side, to the inside. And we are going to have to start pinning so that we can sew. We're going to, this is our folded edge. We don't need to pin there. We're going to pin all the way up the side. This is our, our two ends meeting. And you're going to come across the end, oh, let's see, we have 30 some inches. So come across about 10 inches. Leave 10 inches unpinned. Pin the other 10 inches and down the other side. Now when you're pinning, there are some, some pinning rules. The sewing machine is going to come across here. You can kind of see that blue line there. The sewing machine is going to come across with its stitches in this fashion. We don't want our pins to be in this direction because the sewing machine will run into this head of the pin. So we put our pins in perpendicular. See, math does come in handy in all kinds of projects. <laughs> and then the stitches will go right over the pins. So we'll come right at the end here, push it in. I use my finger to help push it back out the other side, you know, give it something to push against. And then you want to leave maybe three fingers, put another pin. I just pricked myself, that will happen. Make sure you are still lined up nicely, about three fingers. Put in another pin and we're going to follow along in this fashion until we do up the side and 10 inches across the top and then up the other side and 10 inches across the top the other way. Alright, we have all the pins in, up the side, across the top. Here's my opening for the stuffing and we're going to start down at the bottom, the other end here. So that our fabric, you always want your fabric off to the left. And then we're going to line it up. Let's see, do you see five eighths on here at all? One eighth, three eighths, there's five eighths. That is the mark that we want to leave our fabric at because it means from here to where the needle is, is five eighths of an inch. And that's that seam allowance we're trying to get. So line it up, push your fabric in. Put the pressure foot down, which is usually put down at the back. I like to drop my needle in so that I'm sure everything is secure. I want to go backwards first and then forward. By going over the stitches twice, we're going to lock those stitches in place. Get my foot pedal going here. Reverse and forward. And I'm going to keep my eye on my 5 8 inch mark here. And notice it's kind of falling right where this navy blue line is at. This is the whole reason I selected a stripe. It gives you some inherent lines which makes it nice. Just follow that all the way down. Stop every once in a while, put your needle in so it holds things in place. You might have to scoot your fabric around to line things up again straight and then go ahead. You don't have to rush. And when my arm has moved too far, I put my needle in again, adjust the fabric, get back in position and go. All right, now we're coming to the corner here. We almost have to guesstimate our 5 eighths of an inch. And you can see how big it is here. So I would need this needle to come up right to a point about in here and then we'll turn the fabric. So I'll go slowly. Maybe one more and I can even do this one by hand. Lift up the presser foot, turn the fabric. And now I'm really going to lot rely on my 5 8 inch mark here because I don't have my stripe to follow. I almost look like I'm a little, I need one more stitch. So I can turn this by hand, come one stitch further, turn the fabric, and there I, from my location, I can see my 5 8 inch mark and I'm going to keep my eye on that as we come down across the top. Now remember we're only going to that 10 inches pin. Right 
right here is my 10 inches pin. There are no pins coming up. Going right up to it. Now I'm going to reverse and come back to lock those stitches in place. Lift my needle out. Now I do have something that I can cut my thread with, but I always have my scissors in place and I generally cut it close to the fabric. Now we want to take these pins out before we continue sewing so we don't stab ourselves with the pointy ends. Alright, pins are out. You can see my stitch line nice and straight. And here's the hole. Now I'm jumping to the other side of the hole where the pins are. Don't want to flip this over because our fabric then will be on this side. We need to continue around in this fashion so our fabric's off to the left out of our way. Get close to the pin here. Line up our 5 8 Can't forget that. I like to put that needle down in. And remember, I'll go back a little bit. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be precise. Lock the stitches in and away we go. Here at the corner, see how my fabric doesn't line up evenly? I'm going by the shorter fabric, trying to find my 5 8 inch. Let's lift this up and see if I'm close. I have to fold this over a little bit to see. I think I need to go one more stitch. This is still hiding my 5 8 This happens sometimes if your fabric stretches a little bit. Do. Actually, I'm going to do two little stitches. Turn again. Now, because I'm getting ready to put the presser foot down and it's on this pin here, I'm going to remove this pin so the pin doesn't mess up our stitches. Put the presser foot down. It looks like I am pretty much between the green and brown stripe here, so I'm going to continue on down following our stripe to the end. Alright, here we are coming to the end where the fold is. I'm going to come down and I'm going to back up and then I'm going to take, you know, take this away. Lift up the needle, pull it out, and again cut close to the fabric. Let's get these pins out. All right, now I know you have the urge to turn this right side out, but before we do that, we have a little work to do. See all these little threads here? We have to cut our threads off very close to the stitching. Go ahead and turn it over and get rid of those. And most importantly, here at the corner, we want to cut off some of this extra fabric because if you think about it, when we turn this right side out, all of this fabric has to fit into this tiny little space in the corner. So the best thing is don't cut through the threads. Be very careful and cut that corner off. And we'll do that at all four corners, even the ones that hit down here that have the, um, the fold. First thing I'm doing is getting rid of even that teeny little thread. Probably can't even see it. And then I'll just zip the little end off here. Let me get that done and then we'll turn it right side out. All right, now comes the fun when we can actually turn this right side out and see what the pillow is going to look like. So stick your hand in there, go to the farthest corner, do your best, put your finger in there and your finger on the other side and you're trying to push it in and grab it with my hand. Hello, it's in here. Grab that corner and pull it out. Not too far, because I want to go back in. I want to grab the other corner, same way. See my finger in there. Push on it. Grab it as best you can. Hello. Pull it out. We're going to do that with all four corners. Push. Grab it. 
bring it out. And the last one, push, grab it. It isn't always going to be perfect. Now, we're getting there. We have a great big sack <laughs> that we have to fill up. Now, one thing I want to show you is take a look at the corner here. It didn't come out perfectly. And, you know, you like a nice snappy corner. Now, don't be afraid of this. I take this edge of my scissors. I find the opening. Stick my scissors in. Go up to the corner. And just gently press a little bit. Move it around. So you can try to get a point out of that fabric. It is pushed out as much as you can. No one's really going to notice this but you. And just be careful. You won't push that scissors through. That's pretty good. That's as good as I can get. Move on and do all the four corners. This one turned out pretty nice. Already a nice corner. This one. Beautiful. Beautiful. This is down by our fold so we don't have as much fabric in there. See how nice that is? And the other fold corner. I put my finger over the edge of the scissors so it doesn't poke through the fabric on the way over. Yeah, nicely done. Another nice corner. All right, our next step, get it flat a little bit, is rip open our polyfill bag. Yeehaw! This is so much fun. Let me get my pins out of the way. And you simply pull it from this bag and put it into this bag. Kind of silly, huh? This stuff is great. Jam it in. Of course, go to the corners first. So we want to fill that bottom edge in. I hope we have enough filling. Might have to start putting cats and dogs in there. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I pulled too much out at once. <laughs> now this looks like this would be too much for this, but look how it's going in here. I think you really have to pack it tight. <laughs> oh, this is only one bag. I bought three. <laughs> All right, that's bag one. And you can see we're not, definitely not filled in yet. But the point is, if you want this to last, you really need to Push it in and push it down. Get it in the corners, press down on it. We want this, you know, really tightly filled in. What's going on in my corner there? Get up in there. While I can, I have to get it shoved up in that corner so we have nice corners. And you don't want it bumpy either, so work with it. Oh, we need a lot more shoved in there. Okay, I'm going to get bag two. Pack it up in this corner. This corner now. <laughs> this is fun. This is fun. <laughs> it's the Florida version of snowballs. <laughs> You think it's getting lumpy? 
move it around a little. And I've turned the pillow over a couple times too to check both sides. Get those corners nice and full. I mean, this is getting pretty good. Um, and we also need to be able to pull this together. We can't have this gaping like this. But I see some stuffing down here on the floor. And you know, this little bit in bag two, I'm just going to finish it up. And maybe we'll stop there. Okay, let me get this kind of settled. And then we'll, we'll pin this and do some hand stitching. We'll be done. Okay, we have this big gaping hole we have to close up. And I'm trying to figure out how to do it. This thing is so big and bulky. But I think if I pull it down to you know a working level, I'm pushing my body against it, against the table. And notice if I take the two ends and pull on them, of course, pretend that's down in there. This is basically what we're trying to do. Sew that opening closed with the seam allowances, of course, folded in. So what I'm going to do is have Matt hold this end while he's taping. So he's doing two, two jobs at once. Hold this seam allowance. Hold this seam allowance. Pull them together. And get a pin in there. Just get a of any type in there to hold that. Okay, see it's gone through this side and this side. And just to hold one more second, Matt, if I can get maybe one more in here, I might be able to do the rest myself. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going this way. Going opposite. See if that'll hold. Matt, you can let go. I think I've got it now. Yeah, this, this is real loose now. Let's go ahead and sew it. Um, excuse me, pin it this way. Actually might hold it a little bit better. Live and learn, live and learn. See, we need to start at about the blue. That's where the hole begins. But I'll pin it a little further than that. Okay, now I can move along. Making sure I'm turning over my five eighths. Come on. This is the toughest part of this whole project. Okay. A little further. Almost go into place on its own. And then I'm going to get some thread from my sewing machine and a hand needle. And we're going to talk about hand sewing. <sighs> okay. All right, I have my little piece of thread here that I'm going to use to sew this, but I want to show you a little trick my grandmother taught me. I want about a yard of thread. I'm going to fold it over so I have what's half. 18 and 18, about 18 inches to sew with. You don't want anything too long or you're hand sewing like this. We want to just quick get it done. To get 36 inches, you're going to find this funny. And maybe with kids it's a little different, but with an adult, if you put this on your nose, really, stretch it out, your hand all the way out, this length, I'll show you. I'll prove it. You should measure it home. <laughs> measure it home. 36 inches. <laughs> anyway, I always have my needle, a needle threaded so that I can find it, but let's put the right color thread in. I need a light background. There we go, so my eyes can see it. Go in okay. to your needle. I have my two ends here together. You can barely see them. I'm going to grab both ends wrap it around my finger, and then I'm using my thumb to slide and twist the thread. I'm going to grab it here, go like that, and I have a real nice, I don't know if you can see it against my hand or against that, maybe a nice thick knot. Well, let's go hand sew. All right, I have my 18 inches of thread here and my needle, pretty good size so that it's easy to hang on to. And 
Normally I would try to hide my threads in here so that you don't see them on the outside, but I think because this is maybe your first project sewing, we're going to do it the way they do it when you buy it in the store. We're going to just loop around and around and around. You're going to see your threads, but it'll be nice and tight and easy to do. But let's hide this big bulky knot that I made by coming in here. Where's the opening? Right there. Coming in just on one side. See, I went in the middle and I'm coming out one side. And then you hide that knot in there and then always come from the back. Try to keep this even if you can. Back to the front, making sure you're down far enough on both sides. That's maybe a little far. Gonna come up, pull it. You know, our thread matches so nicely, you won't even see it. Move a little further down, 16th of an inch or so. Do the same thing. See how that loops around and we'll hold it. Come back to the back. Again, move down 16th maybe. Loop your thread. And we're going to do this all the way down this opening. Might have to move this with your finger to keep it in line. There we go. And then if, if we feel like we could take this pin out, we'll go ahead and do that so that we don't get stabbed. Now we're going to have a little ridge here. But it is so small, no one's even going to notice. And like I said, when you buy them at the store, often they are done just this way. Do you even see that? It's crazy it looks so good, huh? As you can see, I've gone, what, one, two, three, maybe four inches, and my 18 inches of thread is running out. I don't want to loop too many more times or I'm not going to be able to make a knot. So to make a knot, come back. Go to the back again, but instead of scooting down, I'm coming right by where it's coming out here. Pulling it through. And I'm going to go through this loop. Oops, I caught it with my finger. Tighten it up and do another one over the top of it. Through. Through the loop. And tighten. Maybe let's just do one more for good measure. Through the loop, tighten it, and then we're going to grab our scissors, cut that off close, and re-thread the needle. All right, new thread. We start up the same way we did before. Find where you ended, right here. Come in from the inside, just to hide that big old bulky knot. See it there? I don't want that to be outside. So we stick it in the center, then just come come to the back and around to the front. Exactly what we've been doing over and over and over again. All right, a couple more stitches here. By the way, this is the fourth thread I've had to use. See, I think I need maybe two more stitches to get here to our actual sewing machine stitch. So we'll do one, two, and then I'm going to do my knot, which I showed you how to do. Try to come back close to that original thread. Go inside the loop, make a knot, and Probably best to do it three times just because I expect we're going to be jumping on this <laughs> if we're going to have some fun with it. Cut the thread, remove our last pin, and while you're down here I want you to look at my stitching. Not proud of it, but I think the point is it's a little crooked, it's doubled over, it's not even, and I don't think it matters. <laughs> I started out a little shallower here and got a little deeper at the end, but basically it's our wonderful pillow. Didn't it turn out great? We'll have to try it out in a minute, but I want to say a thing or two to parents. Those of you that do sew, you're probably wondering about some of the things that I did here. For instance, using the um, Sharpie 
I know we don't do that, but I want the kids to be able to see their marks, make it happen. It's on the seam allowance inside anyway. No one gets to see it. Generally, we would wash the fabric first. When you do that, then there's the whole process of the washing, the ironing. I didn't want to deal with that. I think this is a pillow that's going to last until it's too dirty, you can't stand it anymore. And maybe cut it open, make another one, and save the stuffing. Maybe we'll do one that has a zipper or some Velcro so that you can actually keep it next time. This was just quick and easy. Um, you know, I think that's about it. If there were some other things that came across a little funny, like not exactly the way the rules of sewing go, I just want you to know, put it together quick for the kids to not spend as much time with it and have some fun for maybe a first sewing um, experience. So I don't know about you, but that's enough little stitches for me today. I'm going to go use this pillow and lay down. <laughs> have some fun with it, do some reading, play some games. field.